Ocean. And welcome to our panel discussion. This is the ARPA Institute organized panel discussion. And uh, we are happy to have with us today Dr. Hans Binder, Dr. Arsen Arakelian, and Dr. Lilith Nersisian. They will speak, they will be speaking about bioinformatics today. And uh, our board member, Dr. Sarkis Sedrakian, is going to be the moderator. And Dr. Amine Lulegian will serve as the discussant today. So we have a different, slightly different format today. The ARPA Institute has been working in Armenia since 1992. And our main objective is to help science, technology, education, health, whatever area we can benefit, we will try to help. Our board members and our members in general are experts in various fields. And what we try to do is find out what are the needs that ARPA Institute can actually respond to. And we, we do our best to respond to the needs that we can actually undertake. You may know that ARPA Institute is a small organization in terms of financial capabilities. However, we have, we believe a great deal of professional and technical expertise. And that's what we are trying to provide to Armenia. We work with the universities, the Institute of the Academy of Sciences, and also the government of Armenia. We have special uh, arrangements, special working relationships with a few of the institutes of the academy. Like for example, today's speakers are from the Molecular Biology Institute. And we have been working with the Molecular Biology Institute for quite a while now. And also we, we work with the Institute of Physical Research, Institute of Chemical uh, Physics, the Institute of um, uh, the Physics Institute, the formal Physics Institute, which is now the Alejandria National Lab. We also work with the universities as I had, we, we, we work with the Yerevan State University, the Polytechnic and uh, the government, uh, various, uh, various ministries of the government. Uh, we have a few programs that are ongoing. One of the important one is our annual invention competition for young scientists. And we are, we, we take the inventions and send it to our experts. They evaluate the inventions and we give awards to the best of the inventions and try to help them to continue their research and eventually to become a business or essentially be a product. We also, we also have other programs like, for example, we have our distance learning program and we, our most important activity now is with the Alejandria National Lab where we are building a clean room, a class 1000 clean room, which is the first in Armenia and it will be used for very sensitive research. And not only the Alejandrian Institute will use the facility, but also it will be available for, to any of the, the universities or the institutes, who, whoever may need them. So this is mainly our activity in Los Angeles. We organize panel discussions, presentations related to Armenia or Armenians in general. And thank you very much for participating. And now, Sarkis, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Panasian. Welcome and hello, everyone. Good evening for those of you joining from Armenia and Europe, including our speakers. 
And good morning to those of you tuning in from Los Angeles and good afternoon for those of you joining from other regions of the continental US. As Dr. Panderson mentioned, our topic today is bioinformatics and why it is mandatory for Armenia to become an international player. The Human Genome Project was one of the great uh, scientific feats of exploration in the history of humankind led by an international network of geneticists with an aim to sequence and map all the DNA in our chromosomes. Since its inception in the 1990 and initial completion in 2003, over the last two, three decades, there has been a revolution in the life sciences, bringing data-driven research to the forefront. Data has become more and more center to the way we do biology and medicine. Genomic data growth has since been growing exponentially to analyze these large data sets and not only genomic because uh, there are multiple layers to, to this, including uh, epigenome, proteome, metabolome, interdisciplinary methodologies and tools for big data analysis in combination with modern computing knowledge have been developed and applied which resulted in the emergence of a novel interdisciplinary bioinformatics science. This marks one of the outstanding scientific achievements of the 21st century. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, known as the OECD, has called bioinformatics a mega science, considering it as a strategic discipline that forms the backbone of the entire biomedical field, driving scientific discovery and innovation. As a result of these and other advancements in biomedical and data sciences, we have entered a new era of global competition between nations for control of biomedical innovation, which is driven by the anticipated demand for improved and more efficient healthcare delivery. The future knowledge market generated by this demand, and importantly, the economic benefits from these activities will accrue to those nations that are able to shape access of that market to their advantage. Where does Armenia stand in terms of bioinformatics driven scientific innovation, research? What are the challenges and opportunities in making Armenia an international player in bioinformatics will be the focus of the ARPA Institute panel discussion today. To answer these questions, the ARPA Institute is featuring Professor Hans Binder from University of Leipzig, Professor Arsen Arakelian and Dr. Lilith Narcissian from the Institute of Molecular Biology, Armenian National Academy of Sciences. With the engagement of our speakers, our objective today is to share some of the thinking and overview about the issues and impact of bioinformatics on a global scale and the important role that this sector can play toward the future development of science and technology sector in Armenia. We will gain insight into the current state of research and education in genomics and bioinformatics and learn about the role of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute that has been newly formed and the solution it offers for the developing, for developing these sectors in Armenia. We will start with short presentations by our speakers followed by a question and answer session during which I will ask a series of questions and then I will offer the floor to all of the audience. If you have any questions that has not been covered during this session, you may submit them in the chat box. I look forward to having everyone's attention and engaging uh, with our speakers. So without further ado, let me now introduce our speakers. Hans Binder is a biophysicist by training that he obtained from Kharkov University in the former Soviet Union and bioinformatician by passion and professional background. He holds a PhD in computer simulations based on the first work on molecular dynamics and computer simulations of water at lipid membranes and habilitation degree in soft matter physics from Leipzig University in Germany. Then he turned to different areas in molecular biophysics and biophysical chemistry. And after working stays around the world in Australian National University, Canberra, at NIH in the US and University of Umea in Sweden, he became the founding managing director of the Interdisciplinary Center for Bioinformatics of Leipzig University in 2002, just about the time that the human genome was uh, being decoded. 
His scientific work deals with sequencing technologies and machine learning in the context of genome and personalized medicine. Hans is a member of the International Cancer Genome Consortium. He has authored more than 200 scientific papers. For the last 10 years, his group has been closely collaborating with the bioinformatics group at the Institute of Molecular Biology in Armenia, Armenian-German exchange programs resulting in uh, more than 20 joint publications. As a result of these collaborations, he visited Armenia many times and has spent more time in there each year before the COVID situation than many uh, of us uh, Armenian diasporans. Now he is the chairman of the scientific board of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute and is wholeheartedly involved into bioinformatics research in Armenia. Our next speaker, Arsen Arakelian, is the director of the Institute of Molecular Biology of the Armenian National Academy of Sciences. Dr. Arakelian holds an MS in biochemistry from the Yerevan State University and a PhD in habilitation degree in molecular and cellular biology from the Institute of Molecular Biology. In 2011, he established bioinformatics research group focusing on omics, bioinformatics of chronic diseases, cancers, studies of genomic variability, drug repositioning, and systems biology. He is also a professor at University Russian Armenian University and adjunct lecturer at the American University of Armenia. His main research interests are in bioinformatics and computational biology. He was nominated the most productive scientist of the year in 2013, 2015, 17, 19, and also 2021 by the Science Committee, Ministry of Education, Science, Culture, and Sports of Armenia and has over 100 publications in international peer reviewed journals and holds two patents. He's a member of the scientific board of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute as well. Lilit Nersisian, our next speaker, holds a PhD in computational biology and genomics from the Institute of Molecular Biology and Leipzig University in Germany. She also holds an MS degree in biochemistry and another MS in computer science. Lilith has performed postdoctoral studies in computational biology at Karolinska Institute in Sweden. She's been the principal investigator of three prestigious grants in life sciences, including the Marie Curie Individual Fellowship, the European Molecular Biology Organization, and then has twice been nominated among the most productive scientists of the year by the Science Committee of Armenia. Lilith is author of 20 peer review publications in international journals and a junk lecturer at the American University of Armenia and contributed to the bioinformatics curriculum there. She is the founding director of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. Dear speakers, uh, I thank you again for your participation. The floor is now yours for your presentations. And we will start with Professor Hans Binder. You're in the meeting. Huh? Hans, your microphone is muted. OK, do you hear me now? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Good evening, everybody here from Leipzig. It's early evening, not late evening like in Yerevan. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Panosyan and Sargis for inviting us for this important yeah, discussion round to present our latest project. And I hope this impact for Armenian science. Now, let me try to share my screen. One second to start my presentation. So, do you see my slides? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself, but Sarkis always mentioned everything. Um, I 
got my uh, 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 diploma from Harvard State, State University and did my PhD in molecular physics. Uh, one thing to add, what is interesting, um, in Yerevan, exactly the same studies arrived in 2005, 2006. This is this paper on the right uh, uh, with sites of my work that I did 20 years before have in mind these 20 years gap for later explanation. Then I worked for a long time in say area of biophysical chemistry, what became now again an interesting topic because these kind of structures are used to pack the anti-COVID vaccines. And what is important, uh, since 2002, I'm managing director of the uh, Center for Bioinformatics in Leipzig. Uh, so uh, I have 20 years roughly experience in this kind of uh, science, uh, in this area of science. Also to mention is that the things that I did at the beginning of my career are now called structural bioinformatics. Of course, now they are, uh, uh, they use modern computers, novel concepts and methods. The things that I did in the middle of my career are now called nanotechnology. And what I'm doing now is called genome bioinformatics and systems biomedicine. As Sargis always mentioned, something like the big bang of genome bioinformatics is the, the ciphering of the human genome project that was finished about 2003 after 10 years of work of hundreds of scientists and after treating about three billion of dollars. And the idea is to learn the building plan of life, meaning we have the genetic code that uh, decodes the, the amino acids in the proteins. The proteins build the different cells of the human body. And uh, uh, so the idea is, so and the human, human body uh, is composed of different uh, 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 tissues. Uh, and uh, if you know the, 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 the genetic code, we have information. This was the idea, a tissue works properly or it is sick and doesn't work properly. So the idea is, the hope is that knowing the building plan of life, knowing the DNA code, that this will make our life better. And for example, by curing different diseases. But what is the problem? The problem is we have about 3 billion letters in each DNA which roughly refers to a stack of books of 100 meter height. Uh, so it's a huge amount of information. And the problem is that the information looks like this, that there are only letters. There are no words, no sentences, nothing. And the task of bioinformatics is, or the general task is to read this code, to interpret it, and to translate it into practice somehow. And this is the task of bioinformatics. But it is even more complicated because the DNA code is individual for each person. Everybody has its own specific DNA. The DNA changes with age because of mutations. It changes between, it's different between cells, what kinds of, what parts of DNA are activated or deactivated. And it transforms into a very large universe of molecules and mechanism. So it needs technologies, technologies to handle this. Um, sequencing, Technology method is the clue to this. And what you see on this slide is this white line. This is the so-called Moore's law, which comes from computer science and simply 
tells us that nearly every two years, the performance of computers doubles. So it is an exponential law. It, it's an exponential scale on the left. So the exponential law transforms into this line. And the green line is the performance of sequencing technology. And you see until 2007, 2008, both Moore's law and sequencing te technology uh, 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 are nearly parallel. So sequencing was developing like computers. But then there is a sharp break and sequencing moves much, much more fast or faster than uh, computer technology. And now it levels off at the left bar or the uh, left axis are shown the costs per human genome levels off at the, about $2,000 per human genome. From 3 billion for the first genome down to $1,000, this was is the developing development over 20, 25 years. So it's a huge development. But as I always mentioned, the, the, gen the genome alone is not enough. You have to know more about uh, molecular biology. So other sequencing technologies developed in parallel. So now we can sequence the transcriptome, the mRNA, the genome of, of course, the epigenome, how DNA is folded, how it is activated, the metallome, if there are chemical uh, modifications in the DNA and also the chromatin structure. And now since two, three, four years, also we can do this with single cell uh, sequencing or with single cell revolution. This development over the last 20 years um, associates with a lot of scientific breakthroughs, I can say. After the human genome, it's in the next 10 years, roughly, there was there are strong uh, efforts to learn about the function of the DNA. This is the so-called ENCODE project to ENCODE DNA element, followed by application of all this knowledge to cancer, for example. These are the panzer uh, 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 projects that Sark is always mentioned at the beginning. And two big projects, the Cancer Genome Atlas and the International Cancer Genome Consortium finished their project last year with 1,300 author authors. And what is simply evident, no Armenians are among them. What is the problem? Now, as I always mentioned, single sequencing, single cell sequencing is progressing and it's on top of scientific uh, uh, borderline or in, on cut, cutting edge levels. These developments also um, induced big and important discoveries, only two of them in the last 20 years. Only two of them, one is the Nobel Prize in medicine 2018 uh, for immunotherapy against cancer. And two years later, the um, uh, 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 Nobel Prize in chemistry was given to two women uh, uh, for the gene scissoring uh, uh, discovery. So you see what is important. The first development is from these two elderly white, it's not completely correct because Tasuku Honyo is Japanese, uh, elderly uh, man to young women, which is a very good development, by the way. And a second point is that Emmanuel Carpentier, is, she is French, did her work at University of Umea. I was there about 10 years earlier, a, a super university, very good but uh, at rank 319 in world ranking, which is not leading. And so I want to mention, it's not necessarily needed to be at a leading university to get very, to, uh, to perform very high impact research. Okay, another uh, 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 
discovery or important thing more in the field of application and industrial uh, 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 area is the mRNA vaccine against COVID by Pfizer BioNTech in Germany, US, and Moderna in US. You see here the impact. These are the stock values. They increase in, over the last year about 2,000 percent for both companies. But what is important, the development, it, 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 this technology was not developed originally for uh, 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 vaccination of COVID. It was developed for vaccination against or drugs against cancer. And both companies make their work until also 20 years, roughly. And the COVID vaccine is a relatively simple application of this technology. And they, but it was ready at this time, more or less. And it, uh, so they could manage to transform it into real vaccines that are used by people within one year. So what are the bioinformatics ingredients? So you have a lot of complicated stuff. It's on one hand side data, data, so-called molecular omics data, genome, epigenome, transcriptome, protein, metabolome, but also clinical data, individual data about healthy and diseased persons. The second ingredient are life science concepts and models, systems biology, molecular biology, bioinformatics, etc., but also computational and analytic approaches. Big data analytics, MAT, of course, sequencing technologies, uh, so now the question is, we learned that the sequencing of genome became cheaper, cheaper, and even cheaper down to $1,000, but the requirements for anal an analysis grow. And even 10 years ago, people asked, yeah, we have the $10,000 genome, but now maybe the analysis will cost 100 times more, and there is something true in this. So new technologies, new science need new structures and new experts. Uh, in 1992, the, just at the same, in the same year as ARPA was founded uh, in, in Europe, uh, the so-called European Bioinformatics Institute was founded in Great Britain and Heidelberg. Uh, 10 years later in Germany, it was always late, the German Research, Research Foundation decided to, for the first time in its, its history, to support structure building projects. Usually they uh, uh, support only uh, research projects, but because they understood that Germany is late and has to somehow to build up this competence very fast, they decided to finance five bioinformatics centers in Germany with 1 million euro per year and per center for six years. What is also interesting in those times, bioinformaticians didn't exist. I am biophysicist. Many people from the center at the beginning were mathematicians, other physicists, uh, informaticians. But the DFG decided to attract bioinformaticians or people with bioinformatics background, genetic background, uh, to allow higher salaries by about 33% above the usual level. So simply to boost this kind of science. Now our center exists more than 20 years. It's an institutional center. So people are sitting really there. Other centers decided to, to build an, 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 an non-institutional centers and, and yeah, simply putting groups together. Uh, after the six years of financing by DFG, by German uh, Research Foundation, um, we are mainly financed by third party projects. The budget per, per year is annual budget is about 0.5 to 1 million euro. And we perform research services and research itself and a lot of interdisciplinary corporations. 
new science needs also new corporations. And I'm very happy that we, the ITSPI cooperates with the big in Yerevan since more than 10 years now. Um, we have annual work days before Corona, of course, of two to six months in both sides. Uh, we have two BMPF projects, that's the German Ministry of Science. Uh, we, we performed together the first, or organized together the first conference in, Jer in Yerevan about genome bioinformatics in 2019. We have co-supervised PhD, about 20 scientific publications, and the projects we earned are in the order of more than 300,000 euro German money. That means it's not it's money from, from, from German people, not from government. Government only distributes the, uh, the money. Uh, last year, unfortunately, we, uh, we applied for a project, but we didn't get it. But it's a good and a bad or a bad and a good message because another group from the EMB obtained this money of about 250,000 euro. And now they are discovering the wine genome from Armenia in the other German Institute. Uh, so it's really not, it's a lot of money that is flowing from Germany to Armenia. Our topics are omics bioinformatics for health, transcriptomics, genetics, epigenetic, cancer, other diseases from under a methodical perspective, machine learning, pathway bioinformatics, and population uh, 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 genetics. I only talk about general uh, developments. So on my pre-last slide, one, it's not the, in, in the center of our research, but it is, I like it very much. We did it last year. We studied the genomes of about 800 uh, uh, wine accessions uh, around the world. And what you see here on top are genetic maps of single wine accessions that are from Romania, Georgia, Georgia, and Armenia too. And you see different landscapes. And if you put all these landscapes of these 800 wine accessions together, we obtain this map here, this landscape below, but this is not a geography geographical map, this is a genomic map, but what you see on the genomic map is the Mediterranean Sea in the middle. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Uh, the Caucasus in red in the background, Armenia, Georgia, Greece, it's not Caucasus, but also mountains, Germany, France. What you learn from that, from this uh, bioinformatics makes fun and it's also interesting beyond this disease stuff with what we usually do. Why genome bioinformatics is mandatory for Armenia? This is the first discussion point. So I will skip this slide now and only give the main answer, uh, namely not to stay on 20th century level in life sciences. This is the answer to Armenia and to everybody in the world who asks these questions. The bad problems and obstacle, obstacles in Armenia from my point of view. Um, I don't say really a strategic planning uh, in some areas of science. So in your, what concerns bioinformatics, you are nearly about 20 years beyond the international shadow, like with molecular dynamics that I did in the middle of 80s and it arrived in Yerevan 20 years later. But the good message, uh, the second bad message is undergraduate education is, the output is simply too low. And my opinion is it needs a separate uh, bioinformatics curriculum, but we can discuss this later. And more importantly, even there is a postgraduate gap of qualifications. After getting the master, uh, there are two low opportunities for PhD and for uh, follow-up uh, uh, jobs. The good, 
The main point is the self-establishment of BIC, the bioinformatics group at the Institute of Molecular Biology as a scene. Self-establishment means that Arsene Arakulian, he was a wet lab biologist, but it was simply boring to him. And he decided to start with something new and he chose uh, bioinformatics. And what is also important, his former boss, Anna Boyanyan, she supported this. So it was a very good decision. And now, nearly seven, eight, or more than 10 years later, we have a bioinformatics curriculum at Russian University. We have a genomic lab, lab at Russian University financed by World Bank. It is brand new. And overall, my opinion is that critical mass for boosting bioinformatics always exists in Armenia. So there are enough ideas and a low number, but enough to start it at least. And the last development is the establishment of the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute this year by Lilith. I think that's a very good idea to bring all these things somehow together, but it needs, it's a, it's a seed, but it needs caring about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Binder, for this insightful presentation. We'll definitely have an interesting discussion about the, some of the points you raised. Um, I will ask now Dr. Arakelian to proceed with his presentation, please. Uh, yeah, do you see my slides? Yes. Great. Okay, so uh, thanks uh, to Alpa, Salkis, Sakop Panusian for organizing this insightful panel discussion. I think this we today we're rising and discussing very important questions, especially related to uh, the strategies, how we can have developed uh, biotech, biology, industry and research in Armenia. I think we now at the very beginning and the seeds we are planting now will definitely give some results probably some or many years later, I hope some years later. And for that, uh, the cooperative activity of what we are doing in Armenia and what is doing ARPA here will be really uh, fruitful and, and beneficial. So I'd like to speak a bit about the current education programs in Armenia. What we have here, uh, what is uh, the threats, opportunities, and, and what are the options for developing and creating this talent pool in bioinformatics, especially genomic bioinformatics in Armenia. Oh, where's my mouse? Yeah. So uh, why bioinformatics? When I started it, like in 2011, the idea was that we, at this time, due to lack of, fine, lack of like considerable financing of experimental research, we had like permanent shortage in regions, permanent shortage in access to modern equipment, permanent shortage of possibilities for doing a good research or solid research at our institutions. So what we did, we spent most of our times in our laboratories for, you know, of our colleagues abroad. Okay, it was great, we had publications, but this wasn't a way how we can uh, teach young generation of doing molecular biology because you cannot like move 20 people to lab in the US or in Germany, you go there alone. And then when you come back, this knowledge you get there is not transferable because of lack of infrastructure. And this actually uh, strikes me that we can do something which would not require this uh, infrastructure and uh, having a good computer, you can do a good science in Germany. 
So, and this was a, this idea came to mind, not just to me, but to many people, because there was a lot of data as a strength for bioinformatics, low demand for resources, international collaboration. We had here actually strong mass background and IT background, uh, and machine learning started to develop. So this was the strength of for putting together bioinformatics programs. But also the uh, weakness and threats are that we really started very late compared to the rest of the world. So what, and for some time, it became kind of reinvent, reinventing the wheels, the wheel and doing the things that were done previously a lot of times and with the good results or bad results, but the results were there. And here we just started this, like inventing for us the bioinformatics. Uh, we, uh, Armenia wasn't represented in all major initiatives related to genomics and, and bioinformatics in the field of genomics. And the constant dependence on third party generated data because infrastructure wasn't here, so we couldn't rely on, rely on, on data we uh, produce here. Uh, from the other side, bioinformatics is a field which is very novel, and uh, not many people knew about the field. A promotion was also insufficient, and this actually like repeatedly recycled us to this crowding out effect. When you again a lot of uh, efforts or or programs announced in EU or the U in the US or related to bioinformatics were simply passed. Uh, and we couldn't uh, anyway attend to them because lack of uh, human workforce or resources. And also limited abilities for research and developing, development, mainly because not very good perception of what bioinformatics can do. But anyway, uh, bioinformatics programs were introduced in uh, three universities in Armenia. So, uh, but as you can see, we don't have pure bioinformatics program, educational program. In one case, uh, in the Russian Armenian University, we have a diploma specialist program. This is five-year program of bioengineering and bioinformatics. Uh, because engineering and bio and informatics somehow are closely related terms in the world, people who designed the program decided that bioinformatics and bioengineering are also very close terms to each other but they are principally different because the uh, ideas focus of these two fields are very different so if bioinformatics deals with biological data analysis or, or building the, the infrastructure tools for analysis of biological data bioengineering is a pure a stem from molecular biology. So it's a heavily uh, wet lab or experimental work in contrast to heavy computational and mass or, or based bioinformatics. Also, we have bioinformatics courses in uh, genetic engineering. And what is more or less close to a uh, bio pure bioinformatics program is PhD offered at Russian Armenian University, it's called Mathematical Biology and Bioinformatics. In Yerevan State University, citation, uh, it also, uh, again, started from not the right like place. Uh, bioinformatics was considered as a part of biophysics. And the focus for bioinformatics started from the, uh, the fundamental biophysical uh, problems and biophysical uh, ideas. So it very uh, quickly transformed into structural bioinformatics, uh, folding of proteins, identification of protein structures, uh, interactions, uh, some physical forces, and so on. And still there is a master's of bioinformatics, again, with the same, uh, like, uh, same accent or same 
in same direction. And then there is a PhD in biophysics and bioinformatics. So you can uh, see how this, uh, like say, not misleading relation between the biophysics and bioinformatics continues throughout the entire program at Yerevan State University. In the Armenian University, American University of Armenia, there is no, again, there is bioinformatics was considered as a part of data science program, bachelor's uh, program. Uh, so they divided it into uh, business analytics track and bioinformatics track. So there are just simply few courses that are related to bioinformatics with the idea that uh, the methods of data sciences can be directly applied to solving the biotechnology problems, which is also not like very true. There is a lot of the transforming and translational science relied between uh, the current existing algorithms for, uh, for data science and how they are applied in biology. So if we uh, like take bioinformatics and divide into poles, so on one pole there will be biology, on another pole there will be uh, data science or informatics, and uh, ideal, sorry, Oops. Ideal bioinformatics program should be a great balance between data science and biology. So bioinformatics graduate should be uh, should have considerable knowledge in these two fields. And if you put uh, these existing programs on the axis, you would see that bioinformatics programs of Armenian Russian Armenian University and Yerevan State University are heavily skewed towards biology, and uh, bioinformatics program at AVA is heavily skewed towards data science. Actually, this uh, can give the overview why we don't have really a good bioinformatics program because of uh, several reasons. Uh, basically, this is a uh, summary of the, what I already told, but the important thing here is the factors why it happens. So first of all, uh, since this is new uh, discipline, not very well promoted, without clear understanding what it can provide, uh, there is a low flow of students in these programs. For example, at data science program we teach this semester, from 30 people only four took bioinformatics track. The rest went to business analytics because it is very clear what they will then become at, or what will be their career path. Second, we have a lack of critical mass of researchers and lecturers in the field of bioinformatics, especially in genome bioinformatics field. So, Programs are built in the way that they offer courses they can teach, not the courses a student needs, actually, but the courses they can teach to the students and, or they do it as a part of their research. And of course, again, on certain career opportunities, we don't have here much uh, developed biotech industry. So it's a chicken and an egg again, but still uh, people don't go to the, uh, don't choose professions if they don't see how they will develop their future. And just as a statistics, we had in three years at maximum 20, probably 25 students graduated from all programs related to bioinformatics. Some of them now are employed at our institute. They are employed in my lab, in a few additional labs, but mostly students choose uh, the course and then they face the problem how they can continue. Uh, why is the situation is in, is in this, uh, uh, like looks like that? Because there is a limited capacity of bioinformatics research in Armenia currently. So, Mostly laboratories we have, they work in the field of structural bioinformatics. We have laboratory of computer modeling of biological processes at our institute. 
We have Laboratory of Structural Bioinformatics, a junior group of Institute Study of Antibiotic Resistance at Russian Armenian University. We have another Structural Bioinformatics group at the International Science and Education Center at the Academy of Sciences. The only genome bioinformatics group currently is ours at the Institute of Molecular Biology. And throughout all these times, we had uh, like actually spin off one startup, which is called the Nova Sciences. You most probably have heard about it. Our head of antiviral laboratory of antiviral research, Kovac Zakharan, is co founder. But they again do structural bioinformatics, and they are currently on the very, very early stage of development. So they are basically they are doing science, but in within the company. So there is no uh, development. There is more science, and if we count total number of senior researchers in field of bioinformatics in Armenia, we will come up to this not very uh, great number, eight. Uh, if even if I'm wrong, it could be ten. But from this ten. Like, see, the, the 90 majority will be structural bioinformatics because of their career path coming from biophysics. And only two seniors will be from genome bioinformatics. That would be me and Lilith at the moment. So, with this, uh, I think, again, Hans already mentioned that. Uh, the idea of creating the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute was the probably brightest idea of Lilith because uh, this can serve as a infrastructure or center or resource that will bridge education and research in genome bioinformatics in particular. And also this initiative will really help to close education gaps in educational programs and I'm sure Lilith in her talk will present the strategy and the ways how we decide to move towards uh, completing these uh, goals. Thanks very much. Great talk. Thank you, Arsen, for that informative uh, series. Uh, let's switch the microphone to Lilith Mercisan now, uh, who will present about the uh, Armenian Bioinformatics Institute. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks again for organizing uh, this event. So I will jump uh, straight to the presentation. And I guess after listing all these problems, my presentation will be a bit happier because it's about the solutions. They might seem right, but they need a lot of effort to um, come into realization. Basically, um, we have founded the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute in February 2021. And um, the idea was, as um, Hans and Arsen have nicely described in their presentation, is to bridge a very deep gap that we have between um, students, mainly at the bachelor level, and the group leaders that we need in bioinformatics. Basically what, um, yeah, you have already heard that we don't have enough educational programs and this gap is already starting at the level of master's, uh, master's degrees. So a lot of students, and I will um, show you later that there is actually an interest among uh, very talented students to um, take careers uh, or research path in bioinformatics. They just um, either leave the country or they go and choose something else at the level of masters. So if you want to come to Armenia and start your group and you want to pick at least a person who has a master's degree, you have a very hard time. And that's actually a um, very big problem. So I can bring just my own example of how this was solved in my case because I stayed in Armenia throughout my master's and PhD. Uh, so I basically bridged the gap and uh, it was due to Arsen uh, establishing the group and uh, supervising me and Hans joining in later on in uh, co-supervising my PhD. And um, so I had a good 
at least academic program, not an educational one. So, so I stayed uh, all in all in Armenia. And the idea behind the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute is actually to provide um, this bridge to, to bridge this gap and to provide this path for students to continue their uh, path from bachelor's to master's and then to PhDs, etc. And basically, if we consider bioinformatics as a necessary skill set for all life science research and developments in biomedicine and biotechnology, then uh, we can tell that uh, in 2025, say we have, uh, we need to have 30 people who know genome bioinformatics in Armenia. That's because you have um, universities, you have research institutions, you have hospitals, etc., where the bioinformatics expertise is just a necessary skill to have. And um, based on the um, experience that we have, if you train certain amount of people, uh, one third of them perhaps will remain in Armenia and two thirds will leave the country. So if you want to achieve this number 30, you need to start training 90 people in bioinformatics starting from today. In order to train that many people, you need to have at least 20 people, principal investigators who are able to supervise a lab of, of five to 10 people. And as Arisan has already explained to you, this is the situation that we have right now in Armenia. We have um, one person who has a PhD in uh, bioinformatics, that would be me, and one person who is a group leader in bioinformatics, that's Arsen, and he has two PhD students. So that's the situation that we have. And how do we come from here to here? Uh, is a very um, in intriguing, uh, intriguing problem, let's say. But uh, we need to be realistic. So we cannot reach this uh, gap in five years time and the realistic goal would be to at least achieve these numbers. So if we have five um, lab labs that are doing genome bioinformatics in Armenia by 2025, that would be a huge success for us considering the current situation. And perhaps if we keep going, then the exponential number will help us to achieve the needs that we need. Um, so basically the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute is a regular research institution that is designed to have independent research labs that are doing original research in bioinformatics. And um, we will have educational programs uh, that would firstly be non-formal, uh, but then also connected to universities and perhaps providing uh, um, support to develop bioinformatics curricula. Um, so we will do all the activities and have are already uh, doing a lot of activities to recruit students and help uh, them developing their paths. Of course, we need to set up computing resources to uh, perform bioinformatics research. And also we need to have a database that showcases the genomic data produced in Armenia to um, boost collaboration between different labs and to understand what uh, on which topics we can collaborate and also to provide people that have developed these genomics data sets um, better web tools to analyze them and um, we are envisioning to have an official bioinformatics core facility uh, in at the institute that will support academic uh, groups in different institutions in armenia that already have the need for a bioinformatician to analyze their data. So we have a real world examples of such cases already. And to also uh, interact with the industry to provide uh, bioinformatics data analysis services. And the interactions with the industry will, be, uh, will go beyond uh, simple service uh, like production of um, a provision of a simple service. Uh, it will be more uh, specific interactions with different industrial companies as well as um, boosting innovation, which will in turn result in spin-offs, et cetera. So I will just um, bring a couple of uh, real world examples of how we are trying to uh, bridge the gap with different um, uh, events and activities. So the first one is the summer school in genome bioinformatics that's been organized uh, in the summer from June 14 to August 25. We named it Omics 2021. So this was the first basically official and the big event by uh, Armenian Bioinformatics Institute that was organized together with the bioinformatics group at the Institute of Molecular Biology and sponsored by 
uh, Tashi Medicam. So first, uh, we were surprised that we got uh, 47 applications to a very um, to, to a school which considers torturing uh, students because it was every day, um, seven days per week, 11, uh, like seven hours per day for 11 weeks, the students should have uh, spent and they have spent uh, in bioinformatics. So out of these 47 applications um, from different uh, universities in Armenia and one from abroad, we have selected 19 students. And um, 19 students were supervised by two PhD uh, students uh, in uh, our science group. And uh, we had also the support, uh, the great support of uh, diaspora and not only diaspora. So uh, scientists from abroad, 38 speakers from 11 countries have joined the school. And yeah, this uh, school was quite motivating um, in terms of students' involvement, as well as their desire uh, to continue with bioinformatics research. So currently, like we have finished the school, we have closed it, and we are right now just um, organizing the further research activities of the students that have graduated successfully and attaching mentors to, um, to them. And uh, most importantly, uh, we are um, not only supervising them, like their supervisors are not only from Armenia, but also from abroad, including Hans and other people. Um, so another, uh, another type of uh, activity is of course, uh, supervising students, uh, capstone projects, etc. So the first student that um, has joined these activities was Nadek Shamonian uh, from American University of Armenia, a computer science student. And he did his um, capstone um, uh, in telomere bioinformatics, so liquid biopsies analysis of liquid biopsy data sets. And the results were quite um, exciting. So we uh, decided to continue with his research and ARPA Institute uh, has, um, provided a scholarship for him to continue for six more months his research. So he's currently uh, doing that in, uh, at ABI. And another format that we have recently launched uh, is an interesting one. Um, so basically this, um, I started with uh, Eric, uh, who has just started his postdoctoral uh, research in genetic engineering at Harvard University. Uh, he approached ABI um, for, um, like uh, asking for a training in bioinformatics. And basically this is where the idea uh, came. Uh, so we teach uh, Eric bioinformatics together by, by uh, like uh, having also recruiting a student from uh, this time data science at American University of Armenia, who will also benefit from, from this collaboration. So right now they are together interacting and um, analyzing the data by, uh, of uh, Eric. And this is a very um, sustainable format because uh, this is not a support of, of, uh, of, of a postdoc to ABI. This is a format where everybody benefits and this can uh, be a very nice idea to continue with other people, other postdocs uh, as well. So as I've mentioned, um, right now we um, have students who continue their research projects and some of the students, like we had six students that already had mentors and two of them were from abroad. And right now, 10 more uh, students have joined and um, we have nearly eight uh, people who, are su who will supervise or are supervising these students from Armenia and from abroad. And finally, we are in discussions to interact uh, with, uh, with the industry. And the idea is again the same that we have um, experts at ABI, I hopefully this number will uh, increase from two to more. And uh, these experts engage students in certain projects that are needed for uh, our collaborators from the industry and building expertise among the students so that this goes on uh, and is sustainable. But of course, this is very tricky to implement because we have lack of skilled uh, people and um, it is harder to meet the timelines of the industry. But if we implement all of this and continue being creative and putting uh, more efforts, this is our happy uh, vision. Um, so in the first year, the idea of ABI is to unite talents around the idea, which is already halfway done. And perhaps in the third year of our activities, we will have the critical mass of people to keep these things going and gain some international visibility, which will eventually in perhaps 10 years time result in 
uh, already biotech uh, players establishing in Armenia and providing um, this final layer of uh, career paths for people who want to go from research to the industry. And um, of course, we need uh, support to make this happen. We, we need, first of all, support of uh, life science, data science, and of course, bioinformatics experts from around the world to join our research and educational activities. This is critical at uh, this time point. Um, and we need some support in establishing the computing resources. We need support to um, make our strategy even better. And of course, we need support in funding. And finally, I'd like to um, show who we are. Um, so right now we have uh, full-time people working, uh, like people working full-time at AVI, uh, and we are looking for some people more to join. And importantly, I'd like to mention that the very, uh, that we will very soon be having a new lab opening at ABI, and this is a half, half remote, half uh, not remote lab uh, by uh, Professor Hans Binder, supervised by Professor Hans Binder. And uh, the topics that he has mentioned in his talk, including plant diversity, like wine, Armenian wine genomes, as well as everything else uh, in his expertise, including human genome, uh, phenome diversity, healthy aging, etc., will be. Um, the topics of this lab and two students from uh, the summer school will join his lab and also two people from uh, Armenia uh, are already uh, like uh, will, will be joining already so this is the very um, early development uh, of ABI and the very first lab that we will open there I'd like to thank all of our academic and uh, non-academic partners and uh, public and private donors and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lilith, for uh, interesting presentation and insightful and um, uh, important solutions that the uh, Armenian Bioinformatic Institute is offering uh, in the situation for developing the field of bioinformatics in Armenia. And based on the presentations, it's, 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 it's pretty obvious that bioinformatics uh, um, is important and cannot be appreciated enough in the 21st century as it uh, uh, encompasses many different uh, aspects uh, in, in, in biology and medicine and not only. So I would like to kickstart our discussion by asking uh, you know, the following question. If you could please elaborate then why is bioinformatics mandatory uh, requirement for development of biotech industry and life sciences research in Armenia. I, I guess this uh, this is Hans's favorite part. <laughs> okay, a few points. Um, bioinformatics is cross-sectional uh, 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 area in life sciences. It's like algebra in mathematics or say um, uh, quantum physics in physics or surgery in medicine. So uh, without this life science today will not work. Second, uh, it's necessary for Armenia to become visible in the forefront area of of sciences, I would say, uh, and I have a broader background according to my history over a long time, that at present, the genom genomics is the fastest developing uh, area of science. Uh, not in technology, there is energy, batteries, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but it's, it's really a, a fast development in, 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 in genomics and bioinformatics is the tool for this, for analyze this, as I mentioned. So there is a high potency for new ideas. Then next, third, bioinformatics is something like the mother, mother of STEM. Yeah? Uh, so it's interdisciplinary, it in, includes mathematics, 
uh, uh, biology, uh, technology, applications, etc. So it gives a good or an interesting perspective, I think, for kids, young scientists, students who want to combine biological uh, 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 questions with interest in mathematics, maybe even physics and, and computer science. Um, bioinformaticians are needed. This is port, point number four. Uh, there is a professional uh, uh, perspective always in the in the laboratories. Good bioinformaticians uh, are needed and get good positions in industry, in science, in medicine, healthcare, healthcare, and biotech. Then, Austin always mentioned it's relative cheap in daily expenses. Have in mind that uh, a wet lab scientist in life science. The annual expenses are in the order between 30,000 up to 50,000 uh, dollars euro per year. These are not expenses for salary or basic equipment. This is for kids for simply do your daily work. And the bioinformaticians need brain and computers. So this is. And finally, last point is also always mentioned why it's mandatory for Armenia, owning own Armenian genomic resources on an, in an international world. Uh, increasingly, genomic data were produced in Armenia, and it's important to have them collected into in Armenia and published by Armenian groups. Usually now these data are transferred to Western laboratories and the first and second and last author are usually uh, people from there because they give the money because also the, the expertise to, to analyze it. But uh, one goal is to transfer it back to Armenia somehow. That's, my, that's, that's it. From my I'd side. also like to add a couple of numbers uh, from, from the needs of bioinformaticians in the world. So according to a study done two years ago, like 50% of positions in bioinformatics, both in academia and in the industry are not fulfilled. So basically the world needs two times more bioinformaticians and it needed that like two years ago. So I'm not sure what the numbers are right now. That's definitely an important uh, data set uh, indicating that there is a high demand for bioinformaticians. Uh, definitely, and uh, Armenia stands a chance. Uh, you clearly mentioned in your presentations, both Dr. Binder and uh, uh, Arsen Arakelian, that uh, Armenia has started really late into the field, uh, pretty much uh, a decade later than other countries, developed countries. Now, uh, recent analysis has shown that much of the production an impact in terms of highly cited uh, publications in this field is generated by the um, most wealthy nations in the world, uh, which are you know, United States, uh, UK, Germany, France, uh, Canada, uh, being the top ones, implying that the wealth of the state, of the nation is perhaps an important determinant. Does this raise any questions, concern about the barrier for Armenia you know, entering into the field. Uh, any thoughts on this, please? Yeah, well, let, let me take this one. Actually, uh, uh, it's very logical that uh, wealthy nations uh, were pioneering the field because wealthy nations had infrastructure to generate enough data that will be, uh, that will serve as a base for uh, driving bioinformatics forward because bioinformatics is a field highly dependent on data, on big biological data. So if you have like human genome project, all other projects stemmed from the human genome project, they generated tons of data that were first available to the countries that generate, generated it. But Hans also showed the trend trend of decreasing costs of sequencing. And with the uh, current situation, I 
think that Armenia has a chance to become a player if it combine, combines the efforts of data uh, warehousing and Armenian data warehousing. Because if you look in this, any major initiatives, there is almost none, uh, no samples coming from Armenia. It relates to, uh, I don't know, 1000 genome project, it relates to uh, ENCODE, it relates to TCGA, it relates to many, many different uh, like uh, impact making data sets. There are no data coming from Armenia. On the other side, uh, this was realized also by other researchers. So currently Armenia is transformed into country serving samples, which is which is not the best uh, position when you are trying to be a leader in whatever scientific field, which also was uh, mentioned by Hans. So uh, the opportunities, the decreasing the costs for data generation actually gives, give us the chance to uh, have a good, good new impact in bioinformatics because we can slowly start to generate our data and also what is important, add value to this data by uh, implementing uh, new creative analysis uh, methods. And uh, the second thing is that in, as Lilith mentioned, the shortage of bioinformaticians uh, causes people or, or labs from the wealthy European countries to look for opportunities to collaborate with other countries because their bioinformatics resources has already been overloaded. For example, uh, where now uh, besides the huge mutually beneficial and complementary collaboration with Hans, we're also uh, collaborating with, for example, Mount Sinai University Medical School to analyze data which is uh, very uh, rare by its nature. So it's our data or, or genomics data from astronauts traveling to space. And we are trying to uh, use bioinformatics to understand uh, what are the, how uh, cosmic radiation impacts the health of these people who travel to the outer space. And uh, why we are doing this? Because they haven't had enough resources by themselves to do a bioinformatics part. And there are many other groups throughout the world that have a lot of data, but don't have enough uh, capacity or, or workforce to do this kind of research. And we, this is the place where Armenia can step in. So be involved in cutting edge, re edge research by helping others, let's say, and also from the other side, uh, trying to do as much as possible from data which are original and or originated in Armenia. Thank you. Uh, uh, the the role of government will will touch uh, um, on this a little bit later. But uh, one of the points that uh, Hans mentioned early on in his presentation was the uh, government funding. Uh, with the example in Germany for establishing the national institutes, you know, 1 million euros per year for six years. Uh, uh, this is another factor uh, that is probably uh, challenging for Armenia right now. Uh, how much do you think that uh, government uh, financing or support it plays a role? I so the example shown by Hans Hans indicates that uh, intention by government is the probably most important driver, and uh, government should somehow understand and develop a strategy for whatever uh, vision they have in ten. 15 or 30 years. And uh, even 
simple statement of support from government is enough to move things forward. But of course, with committing or, or, or having or defining a goal, there should be also a commitment. It's very much like a startup. So if founder does not commit to startup, no investor will commit. So commitment for government is essential, important. Unfortunately, we are stuck in kind of, kind of stasis situation where uh, if you like trace back history in to like 30 years back, and then another 30 years back, you would see that uh, in Soviet times, government established a lot of research institutions in Armenia, and they were stemming one from the other, like German State University uh, give, gave birth to Institute of Physiology, Institute of Physiology gave birth to Institute of Biochemistry, Institute of Biochemistry gave birth to Institute of Molecular Biology. This was a plan of development of bio life sciences in Armenia. And then another 30 years, like starting from 90s to now, after independence, no single new research institution has been established, which uh, indicates that government didn't have any precise vision and didn't consider science as a driver for economy uh, and, and, and its uh, safety of the country. I hope that at some point this will be changed and important steps will be taken towards this. At least for current situation, we are trying to reach a government to support initiative by Armenian Bioinformatics Institute and gave us equal opportunity to apply for state grants and uh, see what happens from there. Can I add? Uh, two sentences or three. Uh, government has no expertise in science and what to do, in what direction. So Nico Pashinyan thinks that scientists drink coffee, what is okay, this is not his job. But uh, in Germany, for example, the ministry should form panels of experts, advisors, of advisors that of scientists from different areas, experienced people who tell to the government and to ministry what are prospective strategic important directions, in what direction to move in the next 10, 20 years, five years maybe. Then they develop plans how to yeah, uh, calls for projects and scientists group apply for this and these um, uh, applications usually are reviewed by international panels of experts and of course at the end ministry government decides what kind of project depend on, depending on the resources this is point one point two i think there is also uh, so that is the way how to go. The second point is also, uh, even if you have not very much money, a, a lot of money, to bundle it somehow, to to this somehow to to find effective ways to get most output from it. Yeah, and it, it's also there in Germany always from down to top. So scientists say from six, seven, eight groups decided to form a consortium about a, an, an adjoining topic. They develop plans, what group will contribute, et cetera, et cetera, and then apply for to ministry for this bigger project. And it works in Germany and uh, uh, reviewing and, 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 and is very strict. So about more or even more than 50% are rejected. So it's high level science, but anyway, you have to wait to do this. And the last point uh, in all these kind of say consortial projects are considered union groups uh, to give 
young people the opportunity to found their groups in early stage stages of career development. So, and there are even these research school like formats where say PhD uh, 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 projects are bundled together around a an, 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 an joint to topic. So it's taking everything together. It's, I think, clear it's a, it's a matter of money, but it's also a matter of organization and uh, 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 also think about the topics. So and international science community, I think, must be involved somehow. Okay, it's difficult because they don't, don't know the situation in Armenia and details, but anyway, for evaluating scientific level of a project, you need such kind of evaluations. Uh, so based on the uh, presentations, uh, it is quite obvious that education and developing the education system and increasing the number of uh, experts in the bioinformatics is critical for generating that crit critical mass of uh, um, uh, uh, principal investigators and scientists working in the field to uh, start having an exponential growth or um, uh, advancement in the field. In the field. Uh, but also it was mentioned that the collaboration or interaction between the academia and industry is important because, because then eventually the, the entire purpose is to translate uh, the knowledge acquired in academia and through this uh, bioinformatic analysis of data, biological data into something useful that can be translated into uh, um, you know, clinical application. Uh, why do you think that business first approach uh, is not going to work? And why education is so essential? Lily, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically an important, an important aspect for a biotech company is people who work there. And the second important aspect is uh, what topic, what topic is the biotech company uh, pursuing? And uh, of course, another aspect that combines these two is having a system that is flexible enough to provide experts at a given time with the topics, like with the skills that are necessary for this topic. So basically, Topics are changing around the world. There is an innovation happening and you need to have a flexible system that will uh, give an opportunity for an expert to switch from one field to another or for a student to uh, basically be at the forefront of what they're learning. And in countries where uh, this system is already uh, well established in uh, Western countries, etc. Uh, there are students who are taking uh, different um, university programs, they are um, going to research labs where innovation takes place, and they constantly have a flow of experts that can then fuel the biotech and other industries. If you have eight bioinformaticians in a country, six of them in one field and two of them in another, and you want to establish a company, say, in structural bioinformatics or in genome bioinformatics. You need to employ those people full time and those people will be employed. This company may flourish if it only needs eight people, although I don't know many such companies. And then the future of bioinformatics in Armenia will be gone. So basically we need to understand what numbers we are playing with uh, right now. We need to have this buffer pool of experts that will always supply us with new expertise, with new human resources to be able to both be at the forefront of life sciences in research, as well as to supply the industry. So it's very important to understand how we distribute our resources. Of course, as Armenian Bioinformatics Institute, we. Um, try to play at both sides, right? We are bridging the gap both from education to uh, the academia, as well as from academia to industry to have the whole pipe working, but we cannot do everything. 
it's important for us to understand how we distribute our resources. And we think that putting more into research, but not forgetting about the industry is the right uh, thing to do. This actually brings up, uh, uh, you know, the next topic I wanted to, to discuss is, is about the brain drain, which you uh, briefly mentioned in your presentation. Uh, so brain drain, we know, has been a widespread phenomenon in not only Armenia, but, uh, you know, post-Soviet uh, region, uh, but mostly uh, concerning Armenia uh, in the last 20, 30 years. So uh, this is obviously an important concern. Uh, what should Armenia do differently this time to stop and perhaps reverse this trend uh, of losing, you know, experts in, uh, in science, in medicine? in bioinformatics specifically? Um, I'd like to start with this, but maybe if um, people... So, so my understanding is uh, brain drain is a good thing and I wouldn't call it a brain drain. I would call it a flow of researchers around the globe, which is a very natural phenomenon. So um, I like a, a lot of students are joining ABI and a lot of them will be leaving ABI after a couple of years to continue their studies abroad, right? And an important thing is just to have the flow back to Armenia. And the flow back to Armenia is um, something that is not perceived as the most necessary or the higher priority task uh, by, um, by the state committee of, uh, but by, by basically uh, regulators of the science in Armenia. So you need to attract people from abroad and you need to attract people basically understanding what uh, obstacles there are for developing science in Armenia, but perhaps complementing those obstacles with additional advantages that will make the life of people easier. You need to, first of all, promote doing science in Armenia to abroad. So there is, uh, to my knowledge, uh, close to zero promotion of, um, say, open positions for a group leader from abroad to do some, uh, to open a lab in Armenia. Close to zero promotions for a postdoc to return to Armenia and uh, do some science and PhD, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to have this promotion and you need to uh, somehow make it easier for people to apply from abroad. But uh, at ABI, we understand that um, like being a non-governmental organization, we can be even more, more flexible. It's understandable that the governments cannot be uh, very flexible. There are certain uh, rules that they need to follow, but as a non-governmental organization, we find a half, halfway solution to, to this problem. So we don't ask people to uh, pack their bags and leave uh, for Armenia straight away. We ask them to consider opening remote labs uh, in Armenia at ABI in particular. So remotely supervised labs where uh, the person who is supervising may spend some time abroad and spend some time in Armenia and then gather the lab and then perhaps interact with other uh, supervisors that are remotely uh, supervising their labs and understand the scientific environment because the scientific environment is the most important thing for a researcher. And if they see that there is an environment that will let them do science, perhaps some of them will really pack their bags and come back to Armenia, or at least they will provide an opportunity for a person to perform a PhD in Armenia, a high quality PhD. So there are uh, like, there should be ways to try to understand what are the needs of people uh, to um, contribute their expertise to Armenia and meet them halfway. I really appreciate this uh, positiveness. Uh, in fact, that you mentioned that brain drain is a good idea. Uh, let's see how, uh, you know, ABI is if going I to... May uh, add. Yes, of course. Arsene? Uh, thanks. So actually, I kind of agree and disagree with Lilith. I think that brain drain is bad. Mobility is good. So when uh, every, something every, like constantly flows out from Armenia, uh, it's not the best way of keeping science within Armenia. But when there is an exchange, exchange will definitely 
help Armenia in science to, to grow and develop in, in, a, in a good way. But there are uh, this, there is this big non-flexibility from the side of the government. Just a, an example. If, for example, Sarkis, you decide to establish your lab in Armenia and apply for Armenian grant, you have to be in Armenia for eight months. No, sorry, 10 months. So maybe absent only for two months. Otherwise, they have to, like institution where you build your lab, governmental research. For example, our institution, which is funded, fully funded by government, we have to fire you because you are, you basically were absent from, from the country. So this is no way how you will come on the first step. Next, uh, if someone wants to do a PhD in Armenia from abroad, they have to pay for that. Of course, uh, the PhD program fee is not the biggest one. It's around thousand or two thousand dollars per uh, year. But still, we don't have any scholarship programs to get PhD from abroad to do his thesis in Armenia. And a lot of people who reach, we actually get a lot of like inquires about doing PhD in our group, but when they hear about PhD, uh, the, the fee, they simply disappear after. And there is no way we can take, uh, like, we can waive their fee. And the third thing is that uh, to do, to uh, shift to Armenia, you have to have an infrastructure. Again, I had a look to, in your profile at the web page of child's hospital you had your thesis in stem cell and regenerative medicine like it's so even if we invite you and you agree to come you simply will not find a lab where you can do your research and for from that perspective bioinformatics uh, can be an easier way to establish the lab. And if people like Hans uh, and other prominent scientists establish their labs in Armenia, only uh, even their names and their background will be enough to attract young PhD students to come to Armenia. And ABI can handle this because non being a governmental organization, they can somehow be more flexible of, let's say, providing scholarship, waiving fees, allowing Hans work from Germany as much as he wants. He, uh, but meantime, keeping quality of research and uh, building or growing new generation of scientists in Armenia. It sounds like removing the government from the equation solves the problem, but our goal should be probably to uh, engage the government more. No, no, no. It's, it's not the way how we want to operate, like removing uh, government from the... No, we would like to uh, provide them uh, positive examples and success stories. So based on, 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 on which government can change its mindset. That's the important thing. Because uh, government being uh, having shortage in resources, having like million priorities and things to do is very conservative in the way how they uh, want to move forward. So in order to pursue them to change their uh, their minds change their way of action you have to have solid good examples how this can work and ABI now we're trying to uh, like ABI can be a model to demonstrate that this is important and this is the way how we can really push forward science in Armenia Great. Let's uh, let's switch gears now a little bit uh, with a 
for the time that we have. Uh, the time is uh, sweeping fast and talk about uh, education a little bit. Uh, what should be done uh, in your opinion to facilitate the readiness of the education sector? Uh, uh, what what you, you mentioned Arsene in your presentation, uh, what's the, what's the uh, optimal balance uh, a program in bioinformatics should be, you know, with uh, biology and bioinformatics, you know, with uh, with the equal uh, uh, having e e equal uh, proportion. Uh, what else should be uh, done? What else should be changed? And what should be the approach in the educational system to uh, to promote development of bioinformatics? Hans, would you like to take that? Mm, yes, uh, I think that something like genome bioinformatic needs its own track. It can, be, it can be combined with something. It can be called data science and bioinformatics or something like this. But uh, presently, uh, simply the, the focus is not really on this science and bioinformatics itself is hard science yeah you need really high level skills in different areas from mathematics to biology and it's not, not an easy task to learn it in three four or even five years and number one number two i, I hope at least but and the, the summer school of api somehow proves this true that if there are offers to young people, to students in this direction, combined with public relation, etc., cetera, um, this will become an attractive program for young people. And in education, but for me, as I told always, education ends early, in principle, it ends never, but say, uh, after PhD. So, and as Lilith mentioned, we have or ideas how to, come to, 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 to provide young master students with PhD supervisors, master students with master supervisors. And now the next point is, I think, to uh, uh, extend bioinformatics education also in the university level, students level. And for, for this, maybe it's not ready yet, but ideas always exist, how to pop up a bit the existing programs with uh, interesting uh, 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 talks, courses, and so on in the next years. And as Austin said, the ABI, gives us flexibility a bit to, 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 to attract students from different universities and on different levels. But it should be f further developed later on to have a chair for bioinformatics, say at state university or, or RAU or wherever, uh, something in this direction. But this is a far reaching plan for next five, maybe years or so. We're discussing education. Uh, we we also know that Armenia, if I can call it, is taking a, a massive steps for reforming the educational system in Armenia. Uh, what are the what are the some of the challenges and opportunities here? How are, how are these reforms going to contribute to what uh, science uh, is trying to do? And uh, are there any opportunities here? Uh, that these changes will bring for uh, promoting bioinformatics. Uh, actually, uh, the probably the main uh, idea behind these uh, changes in education and law about higher education and science is to bring uh, research-oriented educational programs to universities. The things, the thing we are lacking today 
in many STEM programs, but actually the education is completely separated from the research it should serve. And vice versa, research has no, access, has no access of educating uh, future colleagues, which are now are sitting on the bench at the university. So the law tries to bring these two parts together, as well as promote uh, inter, uh, let's say, in-country cooperation between universities and research institutions. So students will be uh, allowed to take courses from different universities and like gain credits and choose the best matching courses for his program from different universities. This is a very positive uh, moving direction. I entirely uh, pro these changes. And this actually can uh, give an opportunity to ABI to be more proactive in offering uh, changes in bioinformatics program curricula, offering its uh, like talent cloud, uh, which already was gathered around the idea of ABI to contribute to the education in, in different universities. I think the important thing is that uh, the educational program first to, should be uh, research oriented and lecturers that enter the auditorium should be uh, researchers in, involved in cutting edge research. And only this is the only way how education can be improved. So, because no one wants to know, okay, there are fundamental things everybody should know in whatever program it is, but then they should, students should face uh, as early as possible to the real life, real uh, day and future science. And this can be done only by a researcher who works to, today for science, for tomorrow's science. Okay. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate? This is probably my, uh, my last question today. Elaborate on the role of diaspora. Uh, and how diaspora and diaspora organizations can support and contribute to the development of genomics and bioinformatics in Armenia. What can we do? Yeah, to support um, this this endeavor. This important. Yeah, I'll, endeavor. I'll take I, I'll, I'll take this question. So it is it is understandable that we are without scientists from abroad and uh, scientists from diaspora, it is not possible to reach the exponential growth that we are seeking. And uh, we are trying to find ways that are um, convenient for different subsets of diaspora and, uh, as well as non-Armenian scientists abroad to contribute to ABI. And uh, one of these ways is to contribute their expertise in um, first supervising Capstone, Master's, PhD uh, research of students. Second, uh, simply uh, joining our weekly meetups. We have group meetings where people present their projects and we have journal clubs. And it is very important to increase, um, like to contribute with a Q&A uh, session, uh, like Q&A parts of these discussions, because this is where students have the opportunity to understand how scientists criticize um, publications or provide feedback to how their projects should move forward. And uh, it is like, uh, perhaps uh, it, it's not so um, obvious from the first part, but uh, only joining these 15 minutes and asking questions uh, is very important to contribute to a high quality Q&A and for students to understand what science is all about actually. So joining our weekly meetup, supervising students, helping us to develop certain educational programs like they already did with this omics um, summer school and more. So we have also uh, plans to have some specialized courses where people uh, try to contribute with some modular uh, course courses or seminar series. And finally, 
often often uh, your labs uh, at ABI at least uh, at least remotely. So these are four different ways that people can contribute, and of course uh, a simple. Um, also like advice or strategic advice and importantly networking uh, like if you have networks colleagues etc that we can uh, leverage and uh, take advantage of th uh, that would also be great and i think these are yet uh, the only ways that we think of that we can inter uh, like collaborate but new ideas are also welcome sounds good i hope that we have many uh, diaspora and Armenians now in the audience and scientists listening or will be listening later on and will be responsive uh, to your message. Uh, at this point, I would like to switch gears and uh, introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Armine Legian um, for her comments and concluding remarks. Uh, Dr. Uh, Armine Legian is a senior director of educational initiatives for the MESH Academy and clinical assistant professor of population and public health sciences at the Keck School of Medicine at USC and associate director for informatics education, training and outreach clinical research uh, informatics core at the USC uh, CTSI. She has over 20 years of experience in teaching, research and administration in health services. She spearheaded the launch of doctoral and master's training programs in biomedical informatics at the NYU School of Medicine and has most recently launched an undergraduate program in health initiative innovation at USC. Uh, Dr. Legian has received her doctorate in education in health education from Columbia University Teachers College. She also holds MS in health education from Columbia University and MPH in epidemiology from UCLA and completed her undergraduate studies in psychology with a minor in Near Eastern studies at UCLA. Given your expertise and longstanding experience in developing educational programs in various universities, uh, could you please share your thoughts, Armine, about today's discussion and perhaps summarize the important points and the take home message that we should all live with after? Uh, yes, thank you. Discussion. Thank you so much, Sarkis, for that introduction. And what a great panel, right? Obviously, the, the topic is insanely interesting and very important, even though I'm slightly biased. Um, and, and thank you to our Sandy Lee and Hans for. Um, for uh, explaining in great detail and very simply what is um, um, occurring with bio, bioinformatics education in Armenia and for, for Arsene for, for highlighting uh, the, the threats and the opportunities um, in, in Armenia and Lilith explaining the, the, the human capital that we need in terms of uh, making bioinformatics a field that uh, flourishes in Armenia, even though we're just starting it. And Hans, thank you so much for, uh, for, for you know, I, I love how you said it's a new science, new technology, new applications, new industries, right? So um, I, I just remember when I was working on my doctorate uh, dissertation, I could not explain to my parents or the average person what is bioinformatics and what are electronic health records, right? So, um, so it, 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 is, it is important for all of us to work together to get um, students knowledgeable about this field, but also excited about the opportunities that exist in this field. Um, so, I mean, I, I just want to be aware of the time we're, we're already at, at hour two, but um, I am very excited about all the initiatives that are happening in Armenia. We have, we don't have that many leaders, but we do have, I feel like the right people in the right place. And all the three speakers are, are in essence it, right? <laughs> for, for bioinformatics in Armenia right now. And I also want to, um, to, to put in a shameless plug about something that I'm involved related to bioinformatics. So with my um, um, uh, team at CHLA, we're launching an informatics training program, a fellowship in Armenia called the Avetis Health um, Informatics Fellowship. And, and this is, of course, very much related to bioinformatics, at least in terms of the skill sets that are required. But um, great presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the attendants for your interest in, in staying on this long with all of us. Given the fact that we are 
running uh, hour two right now, there was one question uh, from the audience that uh, uh, is asking about uh, uh, on the commercial and economic landscape of bioinformatics uh, uh, in Armenia. Is there is there an exchange between the you know academia and um, commercial sector? Uh, I think if anyone wants to elaborate on this, please. Let's take two minutes. Yes, so yes we have such a, a starting activities, two exactly. But the problem is, again, we have no people and we have to build this competence. We have two companies who, that are interested in that, that what we are doing. Have we still 30 seconds? Yes. OK. One aspect was skipped completely. Uh, my group and people from the ITSB, many of them or most of them never crossed the German border to the east before this cooperation. They confused Armenia with Antigua, I don't know, China, whatever. Now they are they're asking what Lilith are saying we're doing when we can do something together, uh, when we can go next time to Armenia. So I think this is also, in, and if I say we will do something together with them, it, will, it opens the doors also to high level people in Leipzig and in other uh, uh, consortia. And I think Lilith can report similar things from Sweden, maybe, I hope so at least, uh, but I think, this is my last word. Thank you. And this is also an important aspect of all these corporations and API. Do you have any last remarks or concluding thoughts you want to add, Lilith or Arsen? I'd like to thank uh, all of like Vivian, Yus, Arkis, Armine, Dr. Panusian, and Arpa board uh, for organizing this. And of course, all the people who have joined today, I think these type of discussions are very important to uh, be on the same page uh, and to move together uh, with this. Uh, I also would like to thank Arpa for organizing this final discussion. I think uh, what another like thing to we can elaborate is that uh, Arpa has a goal helping Armenia to build solid cutting edge science, scientific field in Armenia. ABI also pursues the same uh, dream or, or, or goal. So it's question, I, I propose to think about how can we collaborate, how can we contribute to ARPA's mission, how ARPA can contribute to what we are doing. So together we can build the thing we are dreaming about, a good cutting edge research in Armenia in various fields, including of course, genomic bioinformatics. We have definitely been discussing a very exciting and intriguing topic today. And uh, obviously there are many more questions that we can keep going for another two hours. But at this point, I would like to take the time and thank our speakers, Dr. Hans Binder, Dr. Arsen Arakelian, and Dr. Lilith Narcissian for their participation and engaging in enlightening presentations and discussion, highlighting the significance of bioinformatics for the future development of the life sciences and healthcare ecosystems, the many challenges and opportunities for growing Armenia into the international player in this sector. I would like to also thank uh, Dr. Armenia Lulejian for her insightful remarks and contribution in today's discussion. And lastly, to all of our participants and attendees uh, for making today's event a success. Thank you all. Thank you, Sarkis. Thank, thank you very you. much, everybody. And, and remember, all these new initiatives can only be achieved through financial assistance. So. We need your financial support 
for ARPA to be able to do more in Armenia. And there is definitely a lot to do in Armenia and we need to help. So please help us do more and we will see you next time in our next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye-bye.